Hey everyone, today we're trying something a little different. It's story time on the Ms. Gold Girl channel. Now before I jump into the actual story, there's a couple topics I want to address here. Two things. One, if you're here for a specific topic, be sure to check down in the description box where I have timestamps. So if you want to jump ahead to what is the topic of your interest, go ahead and do that. If you're here for the whole story, yay, thank you so very much. Today's video will be twofold. One, I'm going to do some sort of housekeeping around the YouTube channel, some little updates that I have for you. The main one, of course, is my Tesla story. And while I'm talking to you, instead of just staring at you and talking, it's kind of boring, I thought I would do my makeup. And specifically, we just came home yesterday from a road trip to visit our oldest son for his birthday. And this was the makeup bag that I took that is not available, so I can't link to it. I actually got it during a Nordstrom anniversary sale a few years ago but I haven't unpacked my makeup. So I thought I would do my makeup with what I brought with me on my trip so you can get an idea. I know a lot of us are traveling right now. I even have the brushes in the travel bag that I used. So I'm gonna to stick to what's in front of me here. I did also want to take a moment to say hello and introduce myself. I have a feeling because of the Tesla subject, there are quite a few of you who normally don't watch me. Hopefully you'll stick around. Maybe you're interested in more than just Tesla stuff. And I did want to explain to those of you who are both new and returning viewers why I am including topics that are specific to fashion and beauty, which is what my channel is primarily about. So if you didn't know this about me, my background, my education is in education. I have a bachelor's degree in sociology, which there's not a lot you can do with that. You kind of know you're going to grad school for something when you major in sociology. And I went on to get a master's degree in elementary education with a focus on reading specifically. So my background is in educating. And I think that my YouTube channel now is still about educating. It's just a different audience and different topics. So the focus of my channel or the why behind what I do what I do is to help, is to use my experience and the certain level of self-confidence that I've achieved over the years to help other people watching find that same self-confidence in making good decisions about the things that they choose to purchase. So in that vein, now that I've dumped everything that was in here on the table in front of me, let's get to the story time. And if you are interested in any of the stuff that I'm using today, I'm not really gonna talk about it so much, but I will list everything down in the description box, the brushes, all the things in the order in which I use them. And if I have any discount codes that'll help, I'll put those alongside. Alrighty, all skincare is already on. I can list that too. And now I'm jumping in. So, for those of you who are here for the Tesla, let me give you a little background. I, my family, own several cars. We own three cars technically. On paper, we lease one. That would be the Tesla. 2021 model Y performance model. And I have done a couple videos on that and I will link them both up there and down in the description box as well. That one we lease, the other three, two of them are our kids' cars and the fourth one is my husband's car. That is a Lexus RCF. I couldn't tell you what year. And it is obviously gas. So there's a point to me talking about why I have a gas powered vehicle. So we got the Tesla in September, late September, 2021. And the primary reason we got a Tesla over all the other options where there weren't a lot of options at the time, the microchip shortage was really bad. I was in a lease and needed to start looking at other options pretty quickly didn't want to buy the car I was currently driving. I have a whole video on that as well. Leasing versus buying and how to buy a car linked up there and down below. I think it's pretty helpful actually. So the Tesla was available. They said at the time within six weeks, I've always loved gadgets. Um, I've always loved kind of getting newer things and that sort of stuff. So the fact that it was available in six weeks and in our price point and ticked all the boxes we were looking for, for as far as cargo ability, all those things. It actually came to us in two weeks, which was kind of cool. And I do like the car. Like all the positives that you've heard about it over the, from everybody on the internet, those are all accurate. But I do have some misgivings about it, which I did share in a follow-up video after we've had it six months. And at that point, I was probably leaning towards, if I had to, I probably wouldn't repurchase 
a Tesla or an electric vehicle, but wasn't still sure. Well, fast forward to exactly the eight month anniversary, eight months to the day of when we took possession of the car, my youngest son, who is turning 21 this month, came home to visit. He's spending the summer where he goes to college in Oxford, Mississippi, came home to visit, was only home for a few days, and uh, he borrowed my car to go to lunch to visit some friends. And all of a sudden, I get a text from him saying, the car just died. I was driving, luckily on the frontage road, not the actual highway, all these flashing lights and things saying, uh, car is about to shut down, um, pull over immediately. It doesn't give you a whole lot of warning. Luckily, luckily they weren't in the middle of the highway going 80 miles an hour. I'm in San Antonio, Texas, so the highway speed limit is 70 in most places, so going nearly 80 isn't that crazy of a concept here. Anyway, they, luckily they were on a frontage road. They were able to glide into a parking lot and the car just completely died before they could even pull into a parking spot. So luckily they weren't like blocking traffic. They weren't in the middle of the road. They weren't somewhere where they would be hit by another car. Those are all good and uh, nobody got hurt. I need to just put that right there. But in my head, I'm imagining all the things that could have gone horribly, horribly wrong. So there are, he's with a friend and they're pulled over in this parking lot not too far from our house. And so my husband and I were like, what do you do with a dead Tesla? Like it's not, you can't just call a tow company, like an ever, like AAA, like they don't know exactly what to do with it. You can't, you need a, you need a flatbed truck. This is one of the reasons I like leasing is everything's under warranty while you're under a lease. My husband goes to call the Tesla. It's not really a dealership. It's, it's like a store. Like it's not really even a store. It's a showroom. It's a display room. Tesla, dealerships don't actually sell you a car. Like when you want to buy a Tesla, you don't do it in the store. You do it on an app or on the web or through the app. Everything is through the app, which is what we found when the car broke. They're like, sorry, you're going to have to put in a request for help through the app. I mean, what if you're in a place where you don't have cell phone coverage? Do you see where I'm going with this? This was a problem. We request a tow, you know, we let them know through the app what the problem is. And from there forward, all communication is done through an app. And like, while I like the convenience of an app for a lot of things, when you're having an emergency moment or something of urgency, I'm not loving the app. Like I want to talk to a person. We get the car towed to the, I guess we'll call it a dealership, showroom, what have you, because they do have a service center there. They said, sorry, we don't have any loaners. We only have six loaners for the entire region. I'm in San Antonio. So this includes more than just San Antonio, like the whole region. We only have six loaners. And I said, okay, I get that. What about, um, can you set up a rental car? Because most dealerships have some sort of relationship with a car rental agency. Like my, I used to have a Lincoln, several Lincolns for years, and they have an enterprise rental car on site. So if they don't have a rental car or a loaner car for you, they will just set it up on their end right there and, and you walk out with a car. They're like, no, we don't do that, but we can send you $800 in Uber credits. I live in suburbia. Like, where am I Ubering? I'm gonna Uber to the grocery store. Um, how about the fact that our, we have a Limer on her and he had heat stroke that weekend, but prior, and we had to race him to the emergency vet so that he could be treated and not die. And also he's fine. You can't wait for an Uber. Like it just, you know, if there's a nine, an emergency that maybe isn't quite 911 level, what are you gonna sit around and wait for an Uber? Anyway, I'm just being a little bit of a brat there, but it's something for potential Tesla buyers to think about that they don't have loaner cars or any kind of car rental things. And yes, my own car insurance will cover a rental car, but it's just, it's just one more thing. Then it goes against your own insurance and all the things. So I was less than pleased to hear about that situation. We did end up getting a loaner almost a week later. We had it maybe two days and then the car was fixed. So it came very late, it did come. So I do want, I do want to give them the credit for that, but it took a while. So the car gets towed on a flatbed to the dealership and then my husband did Uber home. He drove down there, met the kids, gave them his car keys. They went on to their lunch. Michael waited for the tow truck guy and then he Ubered home. Okay, gas powered car to the rescue. So 
this is where it continues to get frustrating. You want to talk to someone and figure out what's going on with the car and when is the car gonna get looked at and what's wrong with the car and when is it gonna get fixed? You can't call the service station. They will not, there is no one to answer the phone. They will not talk to you. Everything has to be communicated through the app. And I am aware that this may sound like 1% are problems and they totally are. But if you're one of the people that own a Tesla or you're thinking about owning a Tesla, these are things you need to think about because these are not inexpensive cars. These are luxury brand prices and, you, and I expect a certain level of service with that price tag. Maybe I have too high of an expectation, but when, and I am leasing, not buying, but I'm still paying a car payment. When you're spending $70,000 plus on a car, some level of human interaction isn't unreasonable to expect. So that was very frustrating. What ultimately was wrong with the car was the inverter, I don't know what this means, by the way, the inverter on the rear engine failed. Um, Shane thought that might be what it was because he ended up Googling what he experienced, which was they heard a really loud thump from almost inside the car, like the back seat area, which would explain it because that's where the rear engine is. And then the car died within seconds. So they Googled it and thank goodness for Reddit. They kind of figured out what was going on. And what's interesting is that the Tesla Model Y and some Model 3s had a recall in China for that problem, but nothing here in the United States. So anyway, it was the rear inverter, whatever the heck that is. I don't pretend to be a car person. I just want to turn on the car and go and it should work. They didn't have that part on hand. So we had to wait for them to have it shipped from California, which is weird because I live in San Antonio and the Gigafactory is an hour away from me, but I guess they don't have all the parts. And then they fixed it. In the meantime, I was having a complete freak out. Like I'll just admit it. I was being a brat. I was having a temper tantrum and I was like, I don't want to get in that car anymore. I don't want the car. I want to be out of this lease. I don't like that the car can just like, what if all the what if scenarios, what if he had been in the middle lane going 70, 75 miles an hour in pretty, you know, heavy traffic and the car just died in the middle of the highway and they would have been rear ended and they could have been killed all the things, you know, and of course I shared this on stories. And so all of you are sending me all these, direct messages with links to stories about Tesla's bursting into flame and, and people getting killed in Tesla's. And so I'm like, this is an unsafe car, I want out. So here's the problem, the biggest problem I see with a Tesla, not necessarily an electric vehicle per se, but at least with a Tesla. They are a really cool car company and they have really cool cars, but they have not figured out the customer service end of the business model. So my advice is if you are dead set on getting an electric vehicle, bless your heart, we now have options. We have far more options than Tesla. There are, every day I turn on the TV and there's another commercial for a new electric car from established, well-known car manufacturers that have infrastructure. They have human beings that work at physical locations where you can take the car and they will have loaners and they will have customer service and they will have people who will answer your questions. That would be my advice. My ultimate advice would be don't buy an electric car. If you're buying an electric car to help with the gas in general, whether you don't want to use gas for ethical reasons or you just want to save money, which is what I think most of us are thinking right now, I would recommend a hybrid. You get a lot of those benefits with a car that frankly, I believe, this is my opinion, is a more stable, secure option, more reliable for so many reasons. That would be my choice. And when this lease is up, that's what I'm gonna go for is a hybrid. I think electric cars are a great concept and I see a future for them for sure. I just think we're not there yet. We're not there yet in technology. We're not there in the infrastructure for charging stations. That's a whole other issue lately. We've noticed every time we wanna charge on the road, so to speak, half the time the charging stations are broken or they don't charge as fast as they say they're charging. So that's a whole other issue. But um, my general issue with Tesla specifically and electric vehicles in general is I just don't think we as a country are there yet. I'd say just give, it, give them some time and they'll get there. But in the meantime, go buy yourself a hybrid. Also, there's a lot more options at more reasonable price points in the hybrid option than in a full electric vehicle. So the other reason why we're annoyed is so yes, I lease the car and it is not easy necessarily to get out of a lease this early. Like I still have 
a three year lease, I'm eight months in. But we've leased all of my cars, my car, we've leased over and over for years. And we've had questions or issues before in the past with different manufacturers. And there's always like a leasing department, a human being at the corporate level that you can speak to, to get information from, uh, to talk about the situation, they'll work with you. Case in point, my Jaguar lease wasn't up for six full months before we got the, the Tesla came in super fast. Obviously we don't wanna pay for two leases at the same time if we can avoid it. There was a number, there was a human being you could call in the Jaguar leasing department and explain the situation. And they were like, because of the shortage at the time, I don't know what's going on now, but because of the shortage at the time, their response was, you know what? Not only will we let you out of the lease six months early, we'll pay you five grand if we can get the car right now because we would love to resell it. So that worked out. There's no human being, there's no leasing, there's nobody you can talk to. It's all through the app, which is very frustrating. I need that human element. So the uh, conclusion here on the Tesla is I still have it. It's fixed, it's working. As far as I know, it hasn't you know, blown up on me or dropped dead in the middle of the highway, thank God. But I am a little nervous. I would say every time we get in the car, I'm thinking, oh gosh, it's like gambling a little bit. Like, is this gonna be the day it just goes? I can't get out of the lease that I can tell. For those of you that don't know, my husband is a lawyer and very well versed in dealing with the car industry and knows where to look for contact information to talk to people and there's nothing. He can't find anything either. So we're just gonna ride out the lease until it's done. And then more than likely I will not be getting another one. Just another interesting thing, Tesla, at least at the time of our lease, did not allow for a buyback at the end of the lease. At the end of the lease, you have to give them the car back, which is fine with us. At this point, I'm really glad I didn't actually, I don't own the car, so they could just have it. I don't want it. So no, I would not recommend buying one. I know lots of you out there watching this and you're gonna say, but I love my Tesla and it's so fun to drive and I save so much money on gas and all those things. And I would agree with all of those statements. And none of that matters if the car stops and someone is injured, killed, or et cetera. None of that matters. And that's all that I can say on that. So that is my Tesla story time. I also have a few YouTube updates for my regular viewers here. My first question for you guys is how many of you are aware that I have an upload schedule? That I don't just randomly put videos up? That I in fact upload videos three days a week, Sundays, Tuesdays, and Fridays and they go live at 6 a.m. Central Time. I'm just curious, and for those of you who either do or do not know that, if you answer below, I'm gonna randomly choose someone who responds from that, and I'm gonna send you out a little goodie bag, because I appreciate that feedback. The reason I ask that is, there's a lot going on this summer, as there is, everybody has, a, like summer is just kind of a crazy thing. I know we all think, yay, summer, and then we start, realizing how much goes on during the summer and we're like, why did we want summer to happen? And because of that, sometimes I'm traveling or whatever and I'm kind of stressing that I'm not uploading on my designated days. I'm just curious if any of you care. <laughs> like, do you specifically go to my channel on a Sunday looking for that new video or you just happen to notice that there's a new video that day or maybe you're one of the few that, and if you change that, let me know, that sign up for the notifications and you set that for all new videos, and so you just wait for the notification to go through to you, and then you pop on and watch the video, that would be cool too. Um, if you're one of those that has signed up for notifications, also let me know, I'll throw you guys in there for uh, to be eligible for a little goodie bag of prizes. I'm just curious, uh, and do you think three days is too much, not enough, would two videos do it for you? I can't do more than three videos a week, like three, three videos a week, plus daily posting on Instagram, plus, my weekly newsletter is pretty much more than I can handle already, so I'm starting to think maybe something's gotta give there, but I, I'm not ready to give anything up just yet. Okay, I am going to put on my mascara, dry my hair, throw on some lipstick, and we'll tie this all up. Give me one second. I have to tell you, I know it's an investment, but the Dyson Airwrap is the best hair tool thing I have ever invested in, and they just released a new version with even better attachments. I'm really hoping that those Individual attachments become available for sale soon because I am going to snatch them all up. But I have always ha hated doing my hair. It's just, to me, it takes far too long to just get the final result. 
but the Dyson Airwrap, all I do is rough dry my hair till it's about 75% dry with the dryer attachment. And then I take the attachment, the paddle brush attachment with little balls on the end and I just section by section. And there's some flyaways, but I haven't even added any product to my hair post styling. All right, so let's finish the look. Now, during my travels to Houston, which has to be one of the most humid places I have ever lived, not lived, visited, uh, this is what I bring with me. This is the travel size of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Setting Spray. It's fantastic. It works like a dream, particularly in hot, sweaty climates. But as you can see, I'm, I have about this much left and I'm about to embark on another road trip to go to Mississippi to celebrate our youngest 21st birthday. And if I'm gonna need intense setting spray for intense humidity, it's gonna be in Mississippi. So I'm saving this. This is the one that I tend to use when I'm at home so that I can dole this out sparingly. And it's the Urban Decay All Nighter Vitamin C Cactus Flower Water. Uh, admittedly, I wear this because they sent it to me and I got it for free. Uh, if I had to just purchase it on my own, I think the regular All Nighter in the original bottle would be what, I don't need a mirror for this, would be fabulous. So it's a cult classic. It's been for well over a decade and it's well-deserved. The lip color I reached for the most was this one from Tarte. It's their Juicy Lip and it's the Hibiscus shade and it's so good. And I'm realizing as I age, I mean, we're all aging, but as I age closer to 50, I'm, I don't know, nine months away from 50, oh my gosh. Uh, I find that I do better with some color on my lips and some color on my cheeks. And this is like a tan, so you can imagine in my natural state. Anyway, that's the full look. All the details are down in the description box. Hope you enjoyed this story time, which was more a venting of my irritation with Tesla and my first world problems and anything else. But I do think it's important if you are considering buying a Tesla or any electric vehicle that you consider these things that can happen, that can be an issue before you invest a significant chunk of money in a car like that. I mean, if I'm gonna give you my input on a $20 setting spray, you better believe I'm gonna give you my input on a $70,000 car. All right, that's it for this story time. Let me know if you enjoyed it and if you'd like to see more, comment below on all the things. Remember, you might win a prize and I will see you in the next one.